And so I'm all about creating those experiences where it's like, wow, that was incredible. And, I, and I'm not creating anything at the same time. It's more of this idea of putting together the perfect location with the perfect food, with the perfect like, you know, uh, medicine and group of facilitators that are going to really bring people through a deep transformational experience that starts with the preparation all the way through the end with the integration, usually working with uh, 5-MeO DMT as well as Iboga, but both separately. So those are two different retreat formats. Like for instance with the 5 meal retreat, we, we, we do purification rituals to, pre to prepare the person to go into this deep work with the Bufo Alvarius and that includes uh, doing to miss call, so sweat lodge, traditional sweat lodge to really help them, you know, kind of cleanse some layers off to allow them to surrender deeper into the work. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site at Consciousness Hacking's Awakened Future Summit. We are now gonna be talking to Trisha Eastman. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Such an honor to be here. Such an honor to be hacking some consciousness and exploring psychedelic states and meditation with you. Well, thank you so much for coming onto the show. I really appreciate it. And yeah. And that was a that was quite a well synthesized. I agree that that's that is what is going on here. It's yeah. su such a great group. Trisha's background: she's the founder of Psychedelic Journeys, Altered States, the role facilitator, duty of care. We're going to be unpacking this. I'm very excited. Yeah. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you represent? Wow, that's a big thing. So, um, who am I? Um, I've been in the role of medicine woman for about four and a half years now, done some very powerful initiations in um, Moondance tradition, work with the 5-MeO-DMT from the Bufo Alvarius uh, toad, which is also known as the Sonoran Desert toad. I work with, uh, I've been initiated in several traditions of Buiti, which is a, uh, a tradition, uh, indigenous tradition from Gabon, which is uh, Central Africa, and uh, they work with a sacrament called Iboga, which is one of the most powerful sacraments, I would say, as far as uh, shamanic as well as uh, psychoactive experiences. Very potent healing tool, also being used uh, for addiction. Um, one of the alkaloids in the, in the plant is a very potent healer called Abogaine. And I got my start at an Abigail clinic in Mexico called Crossroads uh, four and a half years ago and um, have just really been, um, you know, number one, uh, I feel that, you know, there, it's important to balance the sacred and the science. I feel that um, in our modern era, we have a lot of really beautiful wisdom keepers that aren't going to be on the planet for very much longer. So I, I try to bring in um, different elders and weave them into the different events and things that I do. For instance, I um, am launching a new project at Burning Man called Ancestral Heart where I'm going to be bringing two tribes from Africa, from Gabon and from Ghana, to share their traditions, storytelling, uh, play music, drumming, and, um, and ritual and ceremony. But nothing, of course, psychoactive on the playa. Really, we want to introduce people to the way of being and the wisdom that comes through these beautiful elders rather than necessarily focusing on, you know, the psychoactive mm -hmm. plants and things like that. Whoa. Okay, four and a half years of being a psychotherapist, is that fair to say? I can't say that I'm a psychotherapist because I am not certified for that. What I am is I help people, you know, really work work through their trauma. So I, I definitely do a form of therapy, but it's but it's not in the form of uh, you know what you would find uh, in a college and you receive a certificate for. It. Yeah, this stuff is so strange. Like, oh, you get a certificate for this versus actually go through the process of of, yes. of doing it so many times, hundreds, thousands of times with people, helping them versus having a certificate. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's kind, it's funny. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's been probably what is it, hundreds of people, if not maybe even a thousand people. Over a thousand. It's been people. over a thousand people. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, that's crazy. Okay, so before we get to science, spirituality, and the new um, yeah. indigenous, because that's very interesting, what has it been like working with a thousand people? 
Well, you know, every single experience, I feel like we're all mirrors of each other. We're all mirrors of the divine. And I feel like each one has been, you know, I, I, I like to, to think of it like when babies are being born in the hospital and you see that fresh new life that's there that is just so perfect and so beautiful. I feel that these processes, there's some really, you know, sometimes gnarly layers that shut off and that new person, they look different. I mean, if you look in like a plastic surgery office at the before and after picture, some of the before and after pictures of Iboga would be more profound, you know, because that trauma, we wear that. That's our real makeup, like on our faces, the sadness, the grief, the anger, all those things, like we, we wear that on ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the process of going through a session um, with someone like you that's working, helping people work through some of the trauma or, um, and heal, yes. that, that when, when, when working with a healer, the process of integrating that, um, how, how does that process work when you kind of see that what, what was what was being worn by someone that that trauma that was being worn that it how does it yeah how does what does that process look like when it becomes integrated and people have that fresh mm. baby baby face <laughs> yeah I mean I, I just think about like how much like mental chatter is connected to each one of those expressions like the parts that most people would probably say are ugly about themselves, you know, that, that they learn to love them and they go through the process of loving them through acceptance, through going through them, through feeling the feelings. And then once they've done that, the energy leaves the body and sometimes it's pretty intense. Sometimes they purge it out and they're like, wow, I see my dad's face in the purge pool, you know, because it's something maybe that, that was some conditioning from their father. And um, sometimes they just feel really sick and then all of a sudden they burp and they're like, whoa, I feel better. And they release that energy from the body. Sometimes they laugh. Sometimes they cry. Sometimes they scream out rage that they've been holding for, you know, who, who knows how many years where they're just like, Wah! and then, you know, once that's gone, there's just room in there and it's quiet in there and, you know, it's a good place to live. And so they're happy because of that. You know, there's, there's no reason not to be happy. It's like their home's been cleaned out. Whoa. Okay, what's going on in like the? F f let's talk of a couple things here. First is what's going on on the on the um, physiological side within people when they take a plant medicine, and which plant medicines are we talking about? Mm, okay. Well, pretty much all of them have a story arc. And the story arc can happen really quickly or can happen really slowly. The stronger ones, it usually happens really quickly and that's why it can be so intense for people unless they've done a lot of other spiritual practices or they've done a lot of other psychedelic shamanic work before to where they can handle that pace um, or handle that depth of the pain and the things that they have to experience. So the way it starts is phase one is having to clean out the closet. And the closet is your skeletons in your closet. And so literally, imagine someone's going through your closet and like, hey, Alan, here's a skeleton. You want to keep this skeleton or you want to get rid of it? And if you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is let go. You know, like, oh, God, that skeleton's horrible. It's from the 80s. God, get that thing away from me. You know, that's not going to help you get that skeleton out of your closet. You've got to be like, Okay, I accept that. I see that this is a skeleton that, you know, I'm acknowledging what happened, what I did, and I'm going to breathe through this. I'm just going to face it, and then guess what? It goes away. You have to see it before it goes away. So then you go through that process of cleansing, and then once you're cleansed, you can't get into the spirit world unless you're clean. You can't get in with baggage. You are not allowed to bring anything with you but your soul and what your soul knows. And so then, if you're lucky, if you did a lot of good cleaning and you let go of those skeletons, then you get to go into the spirit world. And that's usually where you meet your soul. You get insights around your purpose and, you know, the future and, you know, what, what the universe is all about on a bigger scale and, and meet guides and all kinds of cool stuff. Whoa, okay, so 
some of the story arcs, depending on the medicines that's part of the journey, can be fast, some can be slower, but mo almost certainly we're going through a process of, the, of s skeletons. And, yeah. Okay. And s sometimes there's also the process of just kind of just diving into the oneness, into the unity. Into the unity. Yeah, and so, okay, okay, so it, so it depends on the medicine. Sometimes you get shown skeletons, sometimes you go into unity, kind of just depends on the yeah. on the medicine. Okay, okay, yeah, it seems like with 500 DMT, it's more towards that unity. Straight to the medicine. I have another easier way I okay. can, yes, if, please. if you want to hear. Yeah. So think of it like your chakras are an elevator, and each floor is a... Um, a destination in another dimension but your elevator is going to get stuck and not let you travel if there's trauma in the way and it gets stored on all of those floors so as you're going through those different floors you go up into different layers when you get into the higher floors that's when you start to dissolve and and you know the term drop rejoining the ocean which is the idea of the ocean of consciousness where you become one with all things and you have less of a sense of uh, physicality that happens once you've made it to the sixth floor and so that's where through the third eye the soul leaves the body and is able to travel and so um, cool. when you go through these different floors in the elevator you're basically stopping and realizing some some things you've got to resolve before you're able to to travel you know yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so we 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 re we resolve the the traumas, um, the skeletons in the closet on the way up to the. Um, and you said there's so many things that happen in that when when we do um, merge with this unity when the drop merges with the ocean that there is some sort of a, a, a soul to whatever happens in that place that you speak of is yeah is up to I guess people's experiences and is there some is there a reoccurring theme that people feel when they dissolve the when they have the, the yeah. soul leaves the yeah where do where do they go do they go past this 3d reality where do they go into some other places of existence well I can tell you from my experience and what I've experienced you know, witnessing others. And what I experience is very similar to the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And it's like the same thing that happens when you go through the birth canal when you're born. All this pressure, and then all of a sudden you pop. And that's basically what happens when you pop out of the birth canal. The same thing is happening with your third eye. You're basically going through the birth canal into the spirit world, basically. The, into the spirit world. And into the spirit world. What happens in the spirit world? So the way I've experienced it is there's different layers of these ashrams of consciousness and these are schools and we're connected through our own galactic ties um, to specific ones and then there's also ones that we can build connections with and so when we're going into these different places um, we're receiving I call them light codes, which is just pure information. And you can literally download years worth of information, like what would take someone, you know, the time it would take to get a PhD within seconds. You can receive like a lifetime of information. And so really, the more that you can surrender, the, the, the most pure point is the void. And the void is the center of the entire universe. And it's the womb of the entire universe. And if you go there, then you get the complete soul car wash, so I call it, which is the reset. If you go through the womb and you're able to just be in the complete stillness and death of it, then you come out the other side being reborn. You and get to you leave some stuff and behind. Then you, and then you revisit that void. You, do you revisit the void or do you just visit once and then you re reborn? You can visit it as often as you want. You can kind of carry it with you on a moment to moment basis is? Yeah, I mean yeah. it's the point of creation and the point of destruction and so it's the ultimate place to go because all things are birthed from there. So anything that you want to birth, you can go in and you can, you can rebirth through that, through that place. And, and then the ashrams and the consciousness schools and being able to, you know, what, what is it that we are part of an ashram and then we say, like, I want to go to Playground Earth and go learn 80 years of stuff and then I want to 
come back and go to play at a different place and keep learning stuff? Is this kind of the process or what is it like? I think everyone has their own path and I think some souls will come to Earth and learn specific things and then they might go on to be a galactic logos themselves where they might go into one of these areas and basically represent the essence of that. And so for us to talk about it in this space, it, it's very different to articulate because the human brain is like a cache. It's not an actual knowledge system. Um, the way that we are able to have like the great thinkers of the world are able to create these cords to those galactic ashrams. And so for instance, Einstein, all of you know the great thinkers that have, have existed, the geniuses actually did that outside of their mind. They were thinking beyond this you know, thing that's stuck inside our skull. And they realize that this is just a temporary memory system. And within the system, we actually forget a lot. And we, yeah. we don't have access to very much intelligence. Okay, this, that was such a good um, short bit on, on, um, on, on okay, then, then you started uh, journeying us into science and spirituality blended together and yes. also the indigenous. Okay, so when I go to like psychedelicjourneys.com and I go and I visit your page, am I, what am I learning? Um, what am I signing up for? Am I going to retreat centers around the world and experiencing um, uh, plant medicine journeys with um, different um, healers? Is this kind of... Part of the, yeah. Well, I I really um, am passionate. I feel like my life. One of my my favorite things is I feel like all of us are ultimately here to create art. Like art is the highest form of expression as a human being. And so for me, I feel like my art is ceremony. And uh, being a healing artist, I like to create experiences that are different than anything else you could experience. And you know, when I worked in the normal world, before I was doing this work, I always had a saying that was like, I don't charge by the hour, I charge by the awesome. And so I'm all about creating those experiences where it's like, wow, that was incredible. And, I, and I'm not creating anything at the same time. It's more of this idea of putting together the perfect location with the perfect food, with the perfect like, you know, uh, medicine and group of facilitators that are gonna really bring people through a deep transformational experience that starts with the preparation all the way through the end with the integration, usually working with uh, 5-MeO-DMT as well as Iboga, but both separately. So those are two different retreat formats. Like for instance, with the 5-MeO retreat, we, we, we do purification rituals to, pre to prepare the person to go into this deep work with the Bufo Alvarius. And that includes uh, doing to miss call, so sweat lodge, traditional sweat lodge, to really help them, you know, kind of cleanse some layers off to allow them to surrender deeper into the work. Okay, so all right, I'm I'm now um, someone that is wanting to sign up for some of the psychedelic journey stuff. Yes. So then, am I uh, when I go through the 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 portal and end up um, at one of the centers? Mm -hmm. There's a whole process of even pre and even getting to the center. Like there's like a bunch of stuff that I have to do in terms of you have to, you're like you're trying to set up this perfect ceremonial. Uh, location, nutrition, yes. all this type of stuff to make the experience exactly what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. The awesome experience. Mm -hmm. And then there's also this like intake information that you need to know about the person. There's like, so yeah, yeah so tell us about this process. So what's really important in the process is to really identify who are good candidates for this work. And so, um, you know, one of the things I was talking today in my talk about is these three spheres that I look at with every person to make sure that they're ready. And one is their own spiritual practices, whether it's meditation, yoga, whatever things are going to help them integrate, but also the things that are going to help them center if they're having a hard time in the experience. Um, the second sphere is the level of trauma that they have. So whether it's high, medium, low, um, because that will also impact if they're able to even surrender to these two powerful medicines, which many would classify as the most powerful psychoactive medicines on the planet. And then 
Um, the third is their experience with other psychedelics. Are they more of a novice? They've tried mushrooms one time in high school. Are they someone who's a psychonaut? Or are they someone who's done a lot of like shamanic plant experiences such as San Pedro or ayahuasca? Typically it's someone who is on the higher experience level where they've had some other shamanic experiences and they wanna go deeper. They, they, they wanna do more work and they want it to be in a really well held container. Mm -hmm. And so those are, those are the ideal. And so I look at a balance between those three factors. You know, if one of them's really off balance, there needs to be a strong foundation in the other two in order for it to make sense for them. Because we, we want them to have a good experience and be able to get, receive the awesome that's waiting for them. Yes, yes. And then what are some of the, the w when you have someone go through the process and then they're um, um, maybe coming in with some sort of a deep trauma, um, yeah, so what are some of the things that you actually specialize in healing and integrating? Related to the trauma? Yeah, like, yeah, spe yeah which specific ones for those that may be interested in, in both learning or as well as healing themselves? You know, the way I work with trauma is that, I mean, a lot of people have really, really deep trauma. And, um, you know, I've worked with people with, you know, just what I would call Holocaust uh, survivor level trauma. Um, doctors have classified it at that level. And um, they need a really gentle, slow approach, which is really about powerful mirroring, because many of these people who have deep trauma, they, they're just running away so deeply from their pain and their suffering, and they have good right to, you know, if they, with the suffering that they're, because that's all stored in their body. And so it's a combination of really seeing where they're at, you know, what they're comfortable with, and being able to kind of doula the trauma. And I mean that as like, you know, like when a woman's giving birth, you know, you have those birthing contractions, the same you have when you're releasing trauma in your body. So it's just really helping, you know, maybe it's holding their hand, maybe it's helping to move some energy in the body, putting some pressure on, you know, a certain part of the body that is, you know, where that, where that trauma is stuck. And then sometimes towards the end, it might be helping that person ground by like touching their feet or, you know, doing different techniques to help them to come back into their bodies because they just don't have those tools. And so it's about, first of all, giving them the confidence to see, you know, because they, 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 they deserve it because they went through that experience that they are able to release that trauma, that they're able to face their shadow and their darkness. Um, but then it's also um, the tools that they learn and then also learning a new pattern of feeling your emotions versus running away from them. So it, it can be really powerful if it's done in a very um, soft way. And then there's a couple, there's a, there's a somewhat of a routine that you follow with uh, with 5 MU DMT and um, iboga. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, you mean in terms of how, beginning to end? Yeah, and, and how, uh, yeah, beginning to end through the whole, yes, uh, was it a week is the whole, five days? Yeah, so with the 5 MU DMT, I do it in a format that I've kind of created that I think is a really uh, potent way of honoring the medicine, which is doing three ceremonies over three days. And as I shared before, we do the Tamez call first, and then we close it with a cacao ceremony. I kind of call it the medicines of Mexico because we're using Mayan cacao, we're using temezcal, which is, you know, part of the Mexica tradition that I'm initiated in, and, and my blood, my family line, um, as well as the, the bufo alvarius, which is from Mexico, too. So it's a really beautiful combination and really honoring um, the, the lineages from Mexico and the traditions and the beautiful medicine, um, which, I, which I love so much, um, all of those modalities. Um, and then also um, the uh, iboga is done in two nights of ceremony, but we're also doing purification rituals beforehand as well, which we do these spiritual baths, which are kind of like Olympia, um, but it's a, it's a design to kind of clean you before you 
go into the medicine. So both are incorporating the purification because you don't you don't show up for the sacred like you you would never show up on a date with a dirty shirt. You wouldn't want to show up in the sacred like all dirty. Mm. So the purification rituals are really essential for the yeah. process, and that is usually a five day process. Both both retreats, one's five days, the other's actually six days because um, we, we include extra day on each one for rest and integration. Yeah, this, you wouldn't show up to the date with the dirty shirt and yeah, and you need a day of integration at the end and you have this specific yeah. style of ceremony for both 5-MEO as well as um, Iboga. This is there's so much to still unpack and understand. I, I want to know on a on a like a neuroscience and physiology perspective. Do you know what's going on with the heart or the brain during the times of like seeing the skeletons and integrating them, or during the times of bathing into the unity? Like, yeah, what's happening? Yeah, um, it's really interesting because um, when we work with trauma, we look at these uh, circuitry systems that are regulated by the vagal nerve, um, which there are several points used in somatic therapy designed to reroute the energy and open up the space so that rather than working in an amygdala-based system, which is the reptilian brain, you're functioning from um, the frontal lobe, which is more of like an observer type um, aspect of, of approaching trauma. You can still have a trauma activation, but instead of being in it, reliving it, you're actually like viewing it like, oh, this is an energy that's leaving my body, or this is something that happened that I'm now re-experiencing, but not necessarily like having a reaction, not being reactive towards the trauma. So, um, what happens in that process typically, whether the trauma is um, being lived or whether the trauma is being observed, um, you're still gonna have an elevation of the heart and um, a lot of the physiological symptoms that happen like the first time that you had the incident happen, whatever it was, like maybe you thought you were gonna die or maybe you, you felt unsafe, or maybe you were just really afraid. Um, whatever that is, maybe your heart started beating really fast. Maybe um, you started feeling lightheaded. Maybe, I mean, all the, all the symptoms of like high levels of stress. But the difference between when you actually are viewing it from the observer or the frontal lobe is that you experience it and then it's gone as were with the vagal nerve amygdala loop, it never releases. You just keep re-experiencing it over and over and over again, and it never leaves. Yeah. So it's there, and it gets reactivated. So that's why it's so important to face it and release it, and it's great to have someone there that can do some touch, that can kind of put their hand yes. on your heart, or you know, put their hand behind your neck, and there's a point here, there's a point here, and then there's a point right there um, that can be released. And so the touch is really useful totally. because it's like, okay, we're gonna release this. Okay, breathe through it, breathe through it. You'll feel the difference like on the back of the neck right yeah, here yeah. where it'll just like shoo, open up. It's like crazy how much tension we hold in our body that we don't need to, that we can let go of. Whoa. Yeah. And Whoa. I'm still like, I, I've only been doing this four and a half years, and you know, like the masters of this work, like the masters of the lineage that have taught me, um, you know, have a minimum of 10 years of experience. And so I feel like there's still so much more. You know, I feel like, you know. Lineages, thousands yeah, of years of. Thousands yeah, of years yeah. of wisdom. And, and I have just so much like um, reverence um, for these for these plants and for the wisdom that they've taught me because I don't know anything you know the, the plants have taught showed me everything and I'm really really grateful to be able to share that wisdom and to be able to um, you know be a bridge for them to be be a representative and, and I, I, I say that with humility you know uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that yeah the rock itself is billions of years old and yeah, and yeah. so our little 25, 50 year old <laughs> yeah. spans of, yeah, we need a hefty dose of humility is always in order. 
just a um, crazy how much of the you, you can actually feel in the in the muscle and it, just a touch can mm -hmm. do what a lot of yeah of opening and uh, integrating and um, and just to be stuck in a that that neurophysiological loop of 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 of, of, of the trauma versus being able to see it from an observer and um, mm -hmm. let it pass through it's just wow. Um, you spoke about indigenous briefly there. I just I want to uh, maybe pass a little more time hearing from you um, what it's been like. You said the people that you're learning from the lineage have again, you know, even more experience than they're learning from people again with even more experience. So it's this, you know, multi thousand years of lineage. What are indigenous people like you were initially mentioning at the beginning? What are they when you bring them into the the uh, like you were gave us example at Burning Man and stuff? What are they saying? about what's happening with Mother Earth and with the human race? Mm. Um, I think the most important message is that what's happening outside is an expression of what's happening inside. And the reason that the Earth is so uh, much of a mess is that, um, you know, symbolically we have the sun energy and the moon energy, and the sun energy represents us, our external world. And, and how much we, we project our energy outside of ourselves, or when we're seeking, or when we're taking action. Uh, and then the moon energy is about how much are we pausing and reflecting inwards, and asking our soul, and connecting to our soul, and tuning into our intuition, and um, connecting to emotion, and feeling our emotion. And there's a huge imbalance between the two. And so if, if we can't get back into balance, that's where our earth is a, is a huge problem. And if in what I found is this connection between all of that. For instance, the use of oil is fire energy, which is also connected with the sun to solar power. Plastics are connected to solar. Use of money on credit cards is the same thing. So all of these behaviors, all these things, we're, we're, we're indebting ourselves and we're actually creating toxicity in our body. The, you know, we look at all the plastic in the ocean, we look at all of the um, toxins in the air, all of these things, our body is the exact same thing. And we can't say just because we're richer or more privileged than anybody else that we can separate ourselves away. Even the people that, that don't have the privilege to be able to buy an air purifier or take really good supplements or, or drink really clean water, like the, we are them, like we all are receiving. There's no way you can just say, oh, I'm over here, I'm just going to take my rocket ship to Mars uh, and, and separate yourself from it. There's, there's no way because it's internal and it's just going to keep recreating itself until we solve the problem internally. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah, it's this, the, this mirror, this, uh, ref, this reflection of what we see that's uh, an issue, some of the issues greatest issues of our time externally are uh, yeah, direct yeah. yeah of what's happening uh, internally I think that's really profound and it actually ties us all the way to what you said at the beginning as well about how um, through these thousand plus people that you've worked with that uh, that there's a, a mirror that's happening as well there's like a lot of seeing what we see in ourselves and other people across the world some of the issues around the world are some of the issues within ourselves This has been a very interesting conversation and uh, and I'm really grateful that you're doing what you're doing and that, you. yeah. So psychedeljourneys.com, people can. Yes. Yeah, okay. Such an honor. Yes. You're amazing. You're such an angel. <laughs> you too. You too, yeah. Plenty more. Please. Plenty more to come soon. Yes. Yeah. I want to I wanna see if we can get a um, quick question. Uh, do you think we're in a simulation? Yes. I think the word simulation has, like the word itself doesn't, it misses the word love. And love is ultimately what this is about. But imagine this, 
you are consciousness. Just like I talk about these galactic logos that are like a different flavor of intelligence and love blended together in its own thing. So imagine that there's just one intelligence and that one intelligence decides, wow, it would be really cool if I could water ski and eat food and have sex and take psychedelics and uh, swim in the ocean and visit tropical islands and, and, and drink coconuts and all these amazing things. So it creates this world by splitting itself. The Big Bang, it splits itself into millions of pieces of itself. And those pieces are all a mirror of the one. And all of those, as they split apart, have an identity, a piece. And, and that rainbow of intelligence comes together and it creates a server. Let's call it, you know, just, just an overall server of light. And that server goes through these different layers of galactic intelligence center, suns. And each one of those suns is a portal and eventually make it down to our planet where it creates these archetypal energies. And that's basically what's playing out is we have these archetypal energies that basically are a encoding of a software system. It's, it all is a software system, but the beauty of it is the software system isn't a form of slavery, meaning that the machine is not in service to the program, but ultimately love is the highest thing. So once each part of that individual program recognizes that love is the secret, then they get to operate within the game with complete sovereignty and they don't have to actually play by the rules of the game anymore. Although there are certain rules within the game that always remain consistent. Okay, so the infinite consciousness breaks up into all of the, the, the pieces, the playlands, and then we remember that we are all part of that and then we get to play by the sovereign. The sovereign game. The sovereign game. Which is the game of love. And it's so fun because we created this paradise planet, which I've seen in the it future. Is. It's a paradise, even this one. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Oh, yeah. And then we get to just do all these awesome things. And then when we get bored, we can go be a galactic logos or we can go do something else. And eventually, you know, the way it is, is, you know, like I, I'll use the word God, but God meaning something different than Western religion. but. This is God's toy box. Mm -hmm. And eventually all the toys will get packed away in exactly the order that they came in. That's why all the energies are ascending and they'll all get packed together and then go back into source. Mm. And it's all coexisting at the same time. The toy box of God. Yes. And this planet being one of the toys and yeah. this illusion of separation from the one Yes. Uh, that we get to, yeah, and all of the cool things that you get to experience, all the quality that gets to be experienced here. It gets packed in as we, okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then what do you think, and so the, so the break uh, off of, of, of the infinite consciousness into the, from, into the Big Bang, you call that process simulations. I, I don't call it simulations. Yeah. Other people okay. call it simulations. Okay, okay, okay. You know, okay, I, cool. I have my own, like the way I would describe it is very different than that, but I but I think it is like a game. It is like a simulation because there are um, laws, and you have to follow those laws. And you know, many talk about karma. You know, karma is a really important part of that law. If you understand how karma works, you will not suffer. And that's where you can learn to have the freedom and learn to have the sovereignty and be the one having the fun in the game and being here for the party. Yeah, as in like not causing harm onto others and during the during your lifetime and that yeah, yeah. that and also your past karma, you know, like the ancestral karma as well. So it's not just the, the karma it's karma that you've brought in yeah. as well as um, not creating new karma for yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, yes, there's so much to unpack. What do you think's the most beautiful thing in the world? Love, of course. Yeah, love. The divine, I mean, the be most beautiful thing is when we get to recognize the mystery of life. 
when we get to realize that everything that we see, no matter what it looks like, is actually something else. Yeah, that's well said. <laughs> yeah, the, the ultimate nature, yeah, of the reality. Okay, uh, that's it, Trisha. Holy cow. Thank you so much for coming on the show and teaching us. Yeah. Thank wow. you. So Such an question. honor. Thank, thank you. you, medicines. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you to Mother Earth, this playground that we get to reside on. I that. know. Yeah, yeah. It's such a cool experience being alive. Wow. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Check out the link in the bio to psychedeljourneys.com and Trisha's other links as well. And also get more conversations rolling with our friends, our family, coworkers, people online on social media about what we discuss in this episode. And also check out the links below to Consciousness Hacking as well as the links below to Simulation Support, the organizations, the entrepreneurs, the artists, the indigenous people around the world that you believe in. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Yay. Peace. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Love you. Mm.